What is good, Joe, and welcome back to my channel. The movie I'm reviewing today was recommended by Ashley Mims and is currently available for streaming on Hulu if you have the Cinemax add-on. I will be going over some vague uh, story details, but no big spoilers will be uh, in the video. 13 is directed by Katherine Hardwick and stars Holly Hunter and Evan Rachel Wood. It is a fast-paced, cautionary tale that takes place in early 2000s Los Angeles. Tracy is a middle school honor roll student. Overall good kid, good egg, has things going on for her. But she's in middle school, so she have all those hormones raging. Problem is, at home, she has a mother who's trying to do all the right things, trying to get her life together, but her mother is an ex-drug addict. So she has that chaotic lifestyle. We can only imagine the type of things that she was exposed to as a kid. But despite all this, she's an honor roll student. She's a good kid. But she's at an age where she needs attention. She needs appreciation from her mother. Now, being she's always been a good kid, got good grades, she's kind of taken for granted by her mother. Now, her mother is trying to stay sober. She's trying to maintain a business within her house. And her biggest fault, but also good thing about her, is she has a big heart. So anytime any of her ex-addict friends want to crash at the house with their kids or whatever, she let them in. She has a hard time saying no to anybody. And this is the straw that ends up breaking the camel's back with Tracy because she brings in an ex-addict boyfriend who Tracy does not want around, doesn't trust, doesn't like based on something she saw as a kid that ties into her current emotions. So she starts to resent her mother for breaking a promise to never bring this person into the house and then she does. So she goes from this well-mannered, nice kid to someone who starts to have disdain for her mother, smart mouth, and just overall just rude. You, we can accredit it also, of course, toward her being a teenager. So it's just a bad combination of things. Now her worst decision of all, um, being she's not getting attention from her mother, who's also raising a, another teenage boy, by the way. So her mother has a ton on her plate. So this is why Tracy isn't getting the attention. So Tracy's biggest problem and biggest fault of the movie is she befriends the bad girl at the school named Evie. Now Evie doesn't have any home life. No parents has a, her guardian is a cousin who doesn't really care about her. She's a mess as well. So she barely has any life. So she's basically living this unguarded, frivolous lifestyle that an adult, that an irresponsible adult would want to live as a 13 year old. So she exposes Tracy to all of this cool world, but it is absolutely scary to watch because she's getting exposed to, she just starts out where she's stealing. Then she's smoking cigarettes on a regular. Then she's doing drugs, drinking beer, hooking up with guys. Oh, and she's emulating, she's basically mirroring what Evie is doing. Now Evie is someone who's unfortunately sad to say a lost cause because she's just never had parents in her life. She's just doesn't have, she's going through life unguarded. Now, Tracy has a good mom who wants to be there for her, but she's preoccupied. So a good hearted person is getting exposed to all these terrible things and it's scary to watch. And she is slipping through her parents' grasp. Her, you know, there's, there, there's an age when you're about 12, 13 years old where, you know, you got to have a talk with that parent in your life. Now, her dad isn't around either. I mean, that's fairly common, but that also contributes. Her dad isn't around, but her mom and her never have that daughter, mother-daughter conversation that needs to be had. And as that's not happening, Tracy is slipping further and further away from her. And every time she's not getting attention in the cool world, she then slips deeper and deeper into a depression. Just a, com a horrible combination of circumstances and events, bad pick of friends, just, you know, you're getting you, you, the bad kid and it just leads to a, a highly intense uh, climax at the end of the movie. This is a very good film. Um, it's one that I can't say I will watch again right away, but I'll probably watch it again at some point. This would be, one, this is an absolute cautionary tale, as I said at the beginning of the video. Uh, this would be, if I had kids, this would be one of the first movies I would let them, rated R movies, I would let them watch as like a 13 year old. This is something that should be seen. Um, this, this, these things can happen. Now, I'm watching it and I'm like, oh, please don't do that, please don't do that. But like, I'm like, also she lives in Los Angeles, that doesn't help. Um, if I went unguarded, I had a mom that wasn't there for me. I was exposed to a house that had drugs and, you know, not your best people coming and going freely in this chaotic lifestyle. 
no dad around, mom who's not there for you, you know, you could, you could slip through the cracks and these things happen. I went to school with kids like this, things that happen to kids like this. I didn't see it firsthand, but you kind of see it from the outside looking in. I had a friend who was really smart, always got good grades, and then decided to kind of get into the cool world. It, like it wasn't cool to be smart anymore. And that's part of this movie. It's very fast paced and that's how quickly those things happen. They happen like that within a matter of months. This movie takes place over just a period of four months. Um, big good part of this movie is, well, I, well yeah, I guess good part, is the way they film it. Now it's a million dollar budget movie so it's filmed on, it's done on a minuscule budget. Uh, but it is filmed in a documentary style. So video camera like handheld, you're watching this person to slip deeper and deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole. Um, you're wanting her to get out, but you know she can't. It's, it's an addicting, she's doing, she's self-medicating her depression um, through this lifestyle, through this fast lifestyle, guys, drugs, alcohol, all these seemingly cool things that she knows inherently aren't good. Tracy's a good person. Like I said, her friend Evie's kind of a lost cause. Tracy's a good person and she just, is just seeking that attention and that love. This is a very good movie, it's very intense. This could be, um, if you've seen Requiem for a Dream, uh, Basketball Diaries, this could be like a prequel to something like that, almost. They're very similar. I would say it's not as intense as Requiem for a Dream, but it's it, that's a little bit harsher, but on those same lines. But very good film, Ashley, thank you for uh, recommending it. Um, I actually recommended several very good movies. This is the only one I hadn't seen. I'm, I'm going to try to watch movies I haven't seen. I like to just open myself up. But yeah, this is a good one. Um, watch it, but just realize it's going to be a very intense and uh, sometimes hard to watch experience. You're watching a 13-year-old just slip away. Holly Hunt. Oh, I didn't forget it. Holly Hunter, her mother, Melanie, is absolutely amazing in this movie. Her performance, Evan Rachel Wood does great as Tracy, not disparaging that. The acting by all the lead actors is great, but Holly Hunter steals the show with this movie. She does such a great job as this mother who's just trying to do the right thing. She's trying to do the right thing by herself, by her family. She's balancing so much, and then she's in a hotbed of Los Angeles while doing this. This is her, her performance was fantastic and uh, off the boards. Very good little music in the background as well. They do what they can. Uh, the score is good. Again, million dollar budget, so you're kind of limited. But yeah, great movie. Uh, again, Ashley, thank you for recommending it. I will see you guys again soon. Thank you so much for your time. Y'all take care. Be well and have a great day.